Hi, this is Adi, and today I'm having a look at Bandai's GX60 God Sigma from the Soul of Chugokan line. God Sigma's box is really pretty big. It's a bit bigger than the box for God Mars, who I was showing a few weeks ago, and it's kind of less retro. It's got all these lightning bolts here. I have to admit, I have watched absolutely nothing of any of the fiction from God Sigma, and that's partly because there are so many other shows to go with these toys that I just I can't keep track of them all simultaneously but I, I will get to it eventually. Uh, on the back we have more of this lightning showing how he can join together and all the different modes. Inside the box we've got pretty standard stuff so you can see we've got the plastic tray kind of bubble that holds all the bits and pieces, the styrofoam box down here and we have this little booklet. Uh, at first glance it looks like this is going to be some kind of history of God Sigma, but really it's it's mainly just instruction telling what to do with the toy. There is a few there are a few examples of cool artwork. So I'm guessing that these pictures come from the original artwork for the original Godaken toy, but uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. I don't have that product, but just going by what I've seen of it, I think I probably will get it. Um, it seems like it's very similar to this God Sigma and I'd like to know how close they do compare. As with some of the other uh, combining SOCs that I've seen, we get this cool retro style insert for our styrofoam tray just to hold these guys in place and identify them. Uh, I will note that this cardboard kind of tabs into the styrofoam box which is a little bit awkward and doesn't hold as well as the God Mars box did. But anyway, pretty cool stuff. The names are difficult for me to read, so I'm going to need a bit of practice before I can uh, say them, I think. On the top, we have Kurayo. On the bottom, in blue, we have Kaimeo. And in yellow, we have Rikushino. You're going to forgive me if my Japanese is not fantastic, but uh, I haven't even heard those names spoken before, so please don't be too harsh on me. So this is Kureo, and he kind of forms the central part of God Sigma in the combined mode. But individually, he's also probably the best figure, just given that he's got a little bit more posability. Uh, they all look fantastic, but this guy especially so. And uh, you can see he's got these very flat surfaces that I really like, without too much kind of uh, unnecessary detail cluttering it up. One of my favourite things about SOC. His head here is interesting to me in that this is also his combined mode head. So um, it's it's got to be designed to look good in both modes. And one of the ways they did that was putting these big struts here. And I think that the struts give it a bit more bulk in combined mode while still letting it actually be smaller for the individual robot mode. If you look at his posability, he's got metal clicky joints inside his shoulders. Very strong. I like those the use of the metal in there. He's got clicky joints in his elbows, which I think are just plastic base. A rotation here. And you can see that this keeps coming out when I'm moving his arm up and down. That's not meant to happen. That's a transformation joint for later on. But his arm does have its own uh, spring ratcheted pivot in and out like this. But unfortunately, the, the transformation joint is not as strong as his native shoulder, which uh, makes it a bit annoying because it keeps doing this all the time. But, you know, you get used to it after a while. It just depends how you handle it, whether you can uh, not forget that you've done that when you pose it for a photo or something. Moving down to the legs, We've got a decent amount of in and out at the side here, especially for a, a soul of Chugokan, who really normally have virtually no hip movement. This guy has quite a bit of outwards movement in the hip. Backwards and forwards, too, is substantially more than some other SOC figures and more than the other two guys in this set. Looking at the knee, we've got a little bit of motion at the knee. It's not fantastic, but for a robot toy, it is quite good. And the actual knee joint is here, but on the inside we have a kind of fake 
knee, which it, it is articulated, but you'll see later on that this whole section here actually just pops out and is not even necessary to the toy. And they've just given us this to bulk out, to kind of flesh out the inside of the leg in this mode. One thing that can change on this, which I don't fully understand, as I said, I haven't seen his show yet, which I definitely will, it's on my queue. These bits can pop off. If I can just show you that. It's some kind of baton, and it looks it looks really nice. I mean, it's done in two separate colours of chrome. We've got the, the silvery chrome here and the more gold colour here. Um, this can pop on as an alternate piece. I'm guessing this has some kind of relevance for something that happens in the show. But uh, either way, you can choose which look you want him to have on his shoulders. I think I like the one that he comes with in the box better, this one. It's just got a little bit more detail up here, a little bit more fancy looking. This set comes with tons of hands, and some of them are interchangeable between the different robots. So you can see that his hand here is kind of just a closed fist. Now if you want, you can grab this hand, which is for holding weapons, if I can show you a little bit more clearly. To grasp something like this. So here's his kind of big ass bow, and you can see that that hand will just tab on like that. If we pop off his hand here, we can put the bow into his grip like that. It is a little bit difficult for him to use because the arrow is so huge and mainly because I think this arrow is meant to be used with the combined mode of God Sigma but you can still use it like this although there doesn't seem to be any two finger hand to grab the arrow like that which is a little bit disappointing because I mean that's how you pull an arrow back isn't it? It would be good to have fingers to do that but either way that's one of his weapons. The other weapon that Koreo has is uh, this shiny chromed sword. It looks really nice. There's not much to say about it um, except that it looks fantastic. It can go in the hand which I just showed holding the bow but uh, we'll put that aside. Now to die cast. So this guy, he does have a bit of die cast. The thigh areas here are entirely die cast on the outside and the inside bit here and focus on it. It's a bit hard to see because it's very black. The inside of the leg here is die cast and on the back the little connector there that joins the foot to the lower leg that's also die cast. There's metal in the joints here but overall really not that much metal content especially on the outside surfaces. Uh, that's been one of the criticisms of God Sigma is that he has a low metal content for an SOC. It doesn't really hurt the figure. I think that um, if anything it just makes it a little bit more play friendly but uh, it does maintain at least some weight with the metal that it does have. The next figure is Kameo and, and he's pretty cool looking. I haven't got another robot that looks like this. He's got these unique little horns on the side of his head. Um, I think this is one of my favorite things about Soul of Chugokin is that the robots are just kind of weird. You wouldn't see this in a Transformer or a Western toy. It's this kind of really detail for nothing on it. It just harkens back to the, the old detail that was on the original toy when kind of companies were experimenting with what was actually cool. So a lot of that stuff has fallen by the wayside over the years. But when we get SOCs, we really get a callback to those awesome little features that toys used to have. In keeping with those features, Bandai have included these original style, like old style robot hands. This is what he comes in the box with. Um, this is like what the original Godaken had, but if you don't like old style hands, there are four other hands. So this is a grasping hand, exactly the same as the black one which I just showed you on the previous figure. And they're really easy, little ball joints, just pop it off, pop on the new one, so if that's your preference, a more humanoid hand, you can definitely go that way. Into that hand, we have a couple of different weapons we can use. So the first one is this kind of trident. And I'm guessing it's because of his connection to water 
and what have you. That's pretty cool looking. Uh, it can actually separate into two parts like this. I'm not sure if that's intentional or maybe my one just lacks glue or something. But either way, you could use that as a kind of little pistol if you wanted to have him shooting. Pew, pew, pew. Let's put that trident back on. To get it into his hand, it's a little bit of twisting involved. You just gotta bend his fingers out a little bit, being careful not to snap any of these really thin pieces of plastic. But once he gets a hold of it, it's it's really quite solid, partly because this uh, little arc here cradles his forearm. It looks really nice. It's kind of, uh, kind of a pearly blue paint, similar to his body in some ways, nice and shiny. The other weapons that he comes with are these kind of nunchuck looking things. They're not, not really nunchucks, it's more like a, a mace. You spin it around, it's got a real metal chain, nice and shiny. Nice painted detail on the end here, and this kind of hand guard holder. That in itself looks like it could be used as some kind of weapon to jab someone in the face. There's not any really good way to pose this on camera uh, without using maybe thread or something to hang it by. So I just like to dangle it over his shoulders like this, like he's carrying it somewhere. He does have two. Kameo has some pretty decent upper body articulation. So you can see these things for transformation do move sometimes when they're not supposed to, uh, just like the last guy. But he does have independent joints for his own shoulders like this, as well as swivel at the bicep, 90 degrees at the elbow, balls at the wrist with limited movability, and a ball at the head. But that's pretty much where his posability ends. If you look at the lower body, I mean, we've got in and out here, but the backwards and forwards is virtually nothing, as well as the knee being virtually nothing. He's got a good ankle tilt, and that's more to supply the larger God Sigma with an ankle tilt later on, because uh, he this forms one big foot, and those ankle tilts kind of work in unison to tilt the whole foot. So you're not going to get any kind of action poses out of this guy with with his legs. He can basically just stand there and point something. Which is a little bit disappointing, but he looks fantastic while he's doing it. So it sort of compensates for it. The last guy we've got here is Bikushino. Let me say that again. Bikush Bikushino. I think I'm saying that right. And uh, he's got pretty much the, all the same posability and details as Kameo, uh, except he's got this really striking yellow and black and silver color scheme which is really kind of beautiful to look at he's got my favorite color scheme out of the batch uh, but again he is limited in his joints down here so don't expect any action poses he can only stand and point at things he does also have the best visor out of the bunch i think and that's just because of his his other lighter colors it it shows up more that that's actually a transparent piece of plastic in his visor and again just like cameo he's got these old style hands that can be swapped out for more modern ones. So to do that we're just going to pop that off and then in this case I've already attached his gun to it. So just pop the new one on and here we go. And given that he's a kind of earth based robot we've got this awesome drill on it. These weapons are really nicely detailed, nice and uh, pearlescent gold on this black surface. It looks fantastic. And again, the little bits come off. So you could actually mix and match with these if you wanted to. Really nice weaponry. Now he also comes with this huge mallet for some reason, for clobbering people. And honestly, I don't like it. It looks out of place. On a robot, what does a robot need a huge wooden mallet for? It looks wooden to me at least. Uh, it's there, what can I say? The last component is this jet. Now, I would love to tell you what this is called, but 
There's nowhere on the box or the booklet that it's written in English, so I'm sorry, but I can't. But uh, it is meant to be a jet because the picture inside the book uh, definitely looks more like a jet than this thing actually does. And here is the picture in question. So now we've seen these three guys, let's go ahead and get to the transformation. Just bring our legs together, tab them in, arms by the side, bend down the chest panel. It can be a little bit tricky, but inside we have a little panel that's got to come out. I just use something pointy to get it out, bend that up over the face, close the chest panel behind it. Turn it around, again another panel at the back is just going to close up over the back of the head forming the, the lock to join this in in leg mode. Next rotate the shoulders out like this just temporarily, open these little tabs at the side of the hips, bring down these panels at the side of the legs, pop off the hands. Now I found that it fits in the hole here much better without hands. If I leave these hands on, especially the old style hands, it kind of doesn't really want to fit in there. Anyway, lift up this little tab here, just out of the way, and then carefully fold the arm down. We don't want to bang it into anything and scratch off any of this nice paint on little side panels. Once it's in, bring up the leg side panel, close the hip side panel. Do the same to the other side. Finally, gently compress the whole thing downwards. So it's like that. That's the first leg. Repeat the process on Bikushino. Pop the hands. Put this up. Put this out. Flip this up. Close it. Turn it around the back. Other panel up. Out. Out together, panels down, arms carefully into the cavity, oh that's not careful, you see what I'm doing there, wrecking it, panels up, waist in, down, that's it. Second leg, Kareo is where it gets a little bit interesting, okay so what are we going to do, first underneath his feet there's these blocks, and you can just Pull them out like this. Now what we're going to do is look for the panel, split it open and rotate out this hand, close it up again. This is the God Mode hand. Do the same on the other side. These can just slot straight on in like this to his regular arms to make them much more bulky. Next, very very importantly we want to turn his head to the side otherwise these spikes are probably going to get broken off. So once we've done that carefully bring up this panel and then move the shoulders back out like this If you didn't move to the head to the side, all this would have collided and it would definitely do damage. It even, it even says it in the instructions, so I can't stress enough how important that is. The next step is to bend this foot section all the way back. Now you can optionally just pull that off now if you want, and to do that it just slides out like this. And God Sigma does look a lot better without these huge blocks hanging off the backs of his legs. So I normally go ahead and do that. The next step is to get these blanks out of the inside that bulk out his legs. To do that you just kind of jiggle it a bit and it dislodges and then using your thumb up here you can just let it come loose. And you can see that's what was giving his leg a bulky appearance. So do the same thing for the other side, just jiggle it a bit, stick your thumb up here, pop it out, there we go put them aside somewhere and keep them for later. Then slide up this, like this, 
to form a thicker waist. It kind of tabs in, you'll feel it lock. And then there we have basically God Sigma's thighs and all the upper body ready to go. Grab the legs very carefully, slot them into this thigh section. You'll hear a click, it's locked in. And this blue one in particular, be very careful because this antenna is going to have to slide up into this slot so that it doesn't break. Again, that's locked in. The final piece of the puzzle is this jet. So what we're going to do is grab a hold of this in here and just untab it. You can see that it's joined together. It's going to allow that to move out. Then you can grab this little piece that was tabbing it in, just fold it in like that to get it out of the way. Unfold all this section so that it's much wider, like that. This is all metal, by the way, so it's, it's actually a little bit stronger than it looks. Bend these wings up, and that's pretty much it. So what we're going to do is just fold it down like this, over the top of the head carefully so we don't break the antennas, and you'll hear a click on both sides once you push it in. Then at the back, you'll see that little block is going to tab into a hole at the back. And that's it, it's done, locked in. There we have God Sigma. He's pretty impressive looking. Nice and big, strong. His upper body is a little bit out of proportion with the lower body. And that's kind of what stops him from being my favourite of these uh, combining robots. I like the proportions of God Mars a little bit better than the proportions of God Sigma. But he is unique and really good looking. I've got no complaints about the way he looks. You can see that he can make this nice A stance here and that the ankles are articulated as I mentioned before to let him accomplish that so he can stand up uh, sturdily on the shelf. Rotating it around, you can see this is where those feet would have been sticking out and it does look a bit doofy. I mean, definitely looks better without them. This blue disc at the back can actually pop off and it becomes a shield. So you can see inside that it's got a handle. But this uh, default hand, the hand that works with transformation, it has no way of holding the shield. So let's get one of the other hands on. All we've got to do is pop it off. It's a little bit harder than previous ones, mainly because it's bigger. Pop on a new one. Look at that, a little bit floppy. That's one of, the, one of the crits I've got about the design of the mechanism, is that whatever it is that locks the shoulder up like that is not very strong, and it has a tendency to come down when you're moving the figure. But anyway, the shield can just slot into the hand like that. It looks pretty nice. We can hold it sideways. That's my preference normally for holding a shield. God Sigma also comes with this massive, chrome, beautiful, beautiful sword. It's got a nice little matte finish inside the detail here. Really like this sword. And again, going to need one of the other hands in order to let him hold it. Ah, pop that off. It's a little bit hard. And then just stick the sword in. Got to flex that plastic a bit to make it want to fit. There we go. Just work it in. It's, it's not. It's not really going to break. If you're pushing it downwards, like in like this, you've got no worries. I'm less worried about pushing it down than I am trying to get it in sideways where it has to bend. But in the long run, I think the paint probably will suffer from all that friction.
On the back here, we can choose, if we wish, to attach this little nub to the end of the wing. And what that becomes is a sword holder. So if you flip open the little gate like that, you can just close it around the back of the sword. So now he's got a way of holding the sword to his back. So you can imagine that he would kind of reach up and grab his sword and pull it out. He can't actually accomplish that uh, degree of posability, but you know, it, it's good to be able to imagine that he can. It looks pretty impressive on your shelf with the sword sticking out the top here. He also comes with this kind of uh, gesturing hand. Now, my favorite use for hands like this is to just put it here and he can lay the flat part of his sword in here when he holds it with this hand. That's also a pretty good pose. One problem that we do get with the fists is that this grasping fist, which is used for holding the sword, can't really hold the bow properly. So if you see there, the fingers don't fit through the hole and the only way that they can grab a hold of it isn't aligned in the right direction. So what happens is that once you get him holding the bow, the string is on the wrong side of the arm. You would want it on the other side so that the arrow can be threaded into it, but there's just no way to bend that into the right direction. And it's, it's a bit disappointing. What you can do is put this gesturing hand on and it can at least fit somewhat better oriented on the bow. So he's not really holding that at all. It's just kind of friction, keeping that in place. You can see that it fell off so easily. But you can stick that arrow in there now and kind of jiggle this around until it wants to stay. Which is still not easy. So I had to do that off camera because it's just too fiddly. But um, you can see that he can kind of balance with it in there. It's just balancing in the middle of this hand and the wire has gone between the thing, finger and thumb of this hand. So it does look like he's kind of shooting it off to the side, but there is no way that he can shoot it forward. Um, it looks a little bit weird, his posture. And I, I, I think that the bow isn't really that good of a um, prop just because it doesn't fit with the toy. Let's do some size comparisons. Okay. From head to toe, from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, 27 centimeters. So that's pretty tall. Uh, next to something a lot of people have probably got, we've got Hasbro's version of the new Masterpiece Prime. So quite a bit taller than that. Quite a bit more bulky too. Here we have God Sigma next to God Mars. And for me, this is probably the most important comparison because these guys are directly in competition for me as to which one I like the best. And it's, it's, it's not too hard. I mean, I like the way God Mars looks a bit better than God Sigma, but I've come to realize that this guy can be more fun, uh, partly because the cool way he holds his sword and you know, more playability with the plastic surfaces. I haven't wrecked anything. Whereas with God Mars, even though I really love the way he looks and feels and, you know, there's just something about it that I like with the metal, it disappointed me when I scratched him a bit. So uh, it's a hard call. It's a hard call as to whether the die cast is worth it. But um, just fun-wise, God Sigma does have a little bit of an edge because of the plastic. Both figures... Are roughly the same size. If I can get them to stand up straight you can see that God Sigma's head is just a touch lower than the head of God Mars. Scale wise I'm not sure which one, I'm not sure how the scale compares because I know what human scale is on this guy but I don't yet know what human scale is on this guy. So for God Mars, human scale is basically a human's probably as high as this little uh, square here. But I've got no idea how high a human is supposed to stand next to God Sigma. 
I guess the big difference for most people when it comes to buying these is that God Sigma is still available at a few places. As of this moment while I'm making the video, God Sigma, there is actually one on BBTS right now. Whereas with God Mars, it is much harder to get, and so you have to really pay a premium to get it. But uh, God Sigma is not a cheap figure. So even when he first came out, he was mid-200s, and over the next couple of months, I can easily see him starting to edge up to 300 and above just as the availability kind of dries up so if you like what you're seeing with this it's probably last good chance to buy it now at any kind of reasonable price my final thoughts on god sigma he's definitely a very good figure and um, i can really recommend him to anyone he is a different figure to god mars he's he, he shares a lot of things with him but there's definitely a lot of differences uh, he's got a good quality build to him, a little bit of die cast here and there, nice pearlescent paint. I really like the mixed materials with this see-through plastic in a number of places. Uh, is he my favourite? No, he's not my favourite. He's not even my second favourite. I mean, I, I do like my Baikanthu better than this, but that is not a mark on this figure. Uh, I like Baikanthu because of the idea. Uh, I, I tend to think that the execution on this guy may actually be a little bit better than Baikanthu, but I don't, just don't like the idea as much. If you've got the money to pick him up, you should probably go ahead and get it because it, it really feels nice in the hand. I don't know how to put it. It doesn't move very much. I mean, look, at that's about the extent of what it can do, but it just it feels like something you want to you just want to grab a hold of and pose it and look at it and stuff like that. So it's, it's a satisfying piece to own, and I don't think that anyone who buys this is going to regret it um, so anyway that's my recommendation this has been my video review for bandai's soul of chugokin gx60 god sigma i'm adian thanks for watching I have an idion on the way, maybe tomorrow, so stay tuned.